So this is the Lalit Bianca, an Italian espresso machine with dual boilers, flow profiling, a classic E61 group head with modern tech features. And today we're gonna to take a look more specifically at the newly released Bianca version three. Now, this V3 is an updated version of the espresso machine that I've had on my coffee bar for almost three years now. That was the Bianca version one, and it's no secret that I have been a Bianca fan for a while for its quality, features, and value, and flow profiling abilities. Now, I've been talking and creating videos on the Bianca and this espresso machine before it was even popular and praised as often as it is today. What's new with the V3? What's improved and what's been changed? Why well, consider the V3 now if you're looking at a home espresso machine, and if this is still worth considering over other options in the market today? And I think that's the big question as things have really changed around the industry. So let's dive into it. And if you enjoy the content, consider tamping that like button down below. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And here's a quick ad from today's sponsor, which is Masterworks. Now we've all noticed coffee prices are going up. Coffee machine prices are going up. And in fact, the cost of raw coffee has doubled this year alone. That's even worse than average food prices, which are up nine to 12% or even higher depending on where you live. Now I'm not a financial advisor, but I do my own investment investing in stocks, index funds, and even a little crypto to keep things a little exciting. And that's why I know some things can actually increase in value during times like these, like fine art. I'm talking museum quality art worth millions of dollars. The last time inflation was this high, fine art appreciated an average of 17.5% per year. That's great, so good, it even beat real estate. That's why I'm excited to partner with Masterworks, a platform that lets people like you and I invest in fine art for a fraction of the full cost. With Masterworks, you don't have to be a fine art expert. Their team has over 75 years of experience with the art market, offering works from legendary artists like Picasso and Banksy. And they produce results even with soaring inflation because as recently as early October, Masterworks sold a painting for over 21.5.5% net return. As inflation keeps raging, demand is growing and Masterworks actually has a wait list right now. You can skip that wait list in the link in the description down below. Thank you Masterworks so much for sponsoring this video. Now today, I don't wanna repeat much of what we already know on the Leap Bianca. I've talked about it plenty in the past, and I'll link some full reviews to this machine down in the description below. Today, I more wanna talk about what's new, what's updated, and if this V3 is still a competitor in the market today. So the three things I wanna talk about are its design, its new user interface, and then also some of the new features. Now with design, obviously looking at this, mine's matte black, and this comes right from Lily like this. This isn't customized in an aftermarket setting. They also have a matte white. Really cool, and you can still get the stainless steel if you like. This is the V1 back there if you can see it, but some people love that polished look, some people love the painted look. Noted though, if you get the black or the white, you are forced to get this light wood. Now I'm a huge fan of the matte black with the light wood. For me, this is a very modern look and it matches obviously my studio here. So I think it looks absolutely beautiful, but there's definitely a lot of people who want that walnut look and that also looks pretty good. But if you want those walnut pieces, it is an extra cost. Also noted, if you get the black or white model, they aren't just painted. There's some key features here that I want to highlight. First of all, the paint quality is really great. It's a powder coat from what I can tell, and I don't think this is gonna scratch anytime soon. Also, what's new here is the drip tray. And this is something I'm actually really excited about because for years I've talked about how the drip tray on the Bianca is lacking, and they've updated it, but only for the painted models. What they've done is instead of the grate sitting on the inside, of the Bianca like they have in past models. This is my grate from the V1, and you can see the grate actually sits on the inside. Well, in past videos, if you've been around this ch channel for a while, you know that I haven't been a huge fan of that. It can rattle and there's some rubbers that get loose. And this is really nice. While it still has this cheaper great material compared to like some ECM and Profitech materials, this feels really good. I don't think this is gonna rattle. See, see what I mean? It's annoying. This one here, feels a lot more polished. Huge fan of the new update here. They actually did this so that the paint doesn't get chipped. If you look here, there's like a lip on the outside. If they painted that, you knock a cup there, it chips. Some other design things that I really love about the version three, this is actually also on the version two, but I'm coming from a version one. So these things are really new to me. The steam arm and the water arm no longer touch the body. If you put them all the way back, the only way they do is if you twist them backwards. Let's talk about the user interface. Now, this machine does heat up faster than the version two and version one. No 
noticeably faster for me. For me, it was around 15 minutes. I would still say it's probably good for you to hold it till at least like 20 minutes so you can just get thermal stability within the portafilter. The version one Bianca was one of the first E61 group head machines to innovate a quick heat up time and they're continuing to do that with the version three. Speaking of user interface, this does have a standby mode now and this after 30 minutes shuts the machine off. Now, if you wanna shut off that standby mode, all you have to do is turn off the machine, lift up the lever, turn the machine on, put the lever down, shut the machine off. Let's talk about the paddle for a second because it has changed from the past models, at least out of box experience. My version one out of box needed to be adjusted. All the way closed, it didn't shut off flow and all the way open, it was like 12 milliliters a second. Now it's very different. All the way closed out of the version three on my model has been zero flow. At six o'clock, we're facing all the way down to the port filter. It's about three milliliters a second, give or take. At three o'clock, it's about four to five milliliters a second, give or take. And all the way open is five and above milliliters a second. Second, I've got up to six and a half milliliters a second. This is obviously adjustable. It's a little screw on the back here and you can change that to your preference. Also cross-referencing with Jonathan Gagne, who's a scientist, I'm not. He shared some data with me of his findings with the flow rates and he said uh, very similar, but he did point out that you know, you're never gonna get consistent results in measuring flow, which is droplets of water. Droplets of water agglomerates, unless there's a typical basket and a viscous coffee that create a straight stream, you're gonna have different results in measuring flow rate. So when you do have those elements, it'll be a little more consistent. Now, the V3 has a few big features like low flow mode. Before we get to that one though, cause that's probably the biggest, I wanna talk about some other things that are available now in the V3. Now the LCC here hasn't changed, which I would have loved to see that if I'm honest, this has been in this machine for a few years now. And I talked about it in my review earlier this year, I would have loved to see like a touchscreen or something a little more updated. That being said, I guess if it's not broken, don't fix it. But in here, there's got a bunch of new features and one of those being like an offset for the boiler. Basically a mode that enables you to set a offset of up to 25 degrees Celsius because as water is exiting out of the group head, the motor actually brings in cold water from the tank into the boiler boiler. And that's obviously gonna disrupt our water temperature. And so you can actually offset that temperature just a little bit, which helps with consistency of water temperature out of the group head. The other feature here is low flow mode. And really excited about this. I think low flow has a lot to offer for a lot of people. Now we still have pre-infusion in there. I would like to call this pre-wetting. It's basically just turning on the motor and then turning it off and letting the water soak through the puck. Low flow is basically an automated version of the brew paddle. If you've ever found yourself using a Bianca, maybe interested in it, but maybe a little intimidated by the whole process of using a manual paddle, this would be the result for that. You can set a low flow mode at let's say low flow of 10 seconds. And for the first 10 seconds of your shot, it will brew at about four bars on the manometer here at the group head. And then after 10 seconds, it'll go to full pressure, which is about nine bars. And then after that nine bars comes down, you can actually set a end low flow as well. So you can bring it back down to that temperature to kind of ramp back down. Now, I think this is really great. This open a lot of possibilities, not only because you can combine this with the paddle, you can use this with that. You can also use it with the pre-infusion mode. I think it's really cool. I, and what's really neat too, is you can basically do things like blooming espresso. You can do that automated pretty close on this machine by doing the low flow mode and then setting a pre-infusion. It's max time is 20 seconds, but obviously you can do things like Slayer shots and you can do like Londiniums and stuff like that without really touching anything which is really nice. And if you just want consistency, back-to-back -back shots, you can dial in a coffee to a low flow profile and it will do that every single shot. It doesn't enable you to adjust how much flow would be in the low flow. You can adjust that obviously with the paddle. It's still not like a perfect system. It doesn't graph it out for you like a decent would. The only way that you could do that would be adding a smart espresso profiler, which is an add-on that you can apparently put up right here at the manometer, Lance. We'll leave that one for you, so stick around for his review. So after three years of owning the Bianca and now having the version three and seeing all of its new features, is this still a machine I would recommend for many of you? It's more complicated today than it was a few years ago. Here's what I wanna say. Depending on where you are in the world, this is gonna be a great value or only a good value. Maybe not even a good value at all. Here in Canada, this is $3,800 Canadian. The ECM Synchronica is almost $1,000 more than this. The Profitec Pro 700 is three, $400 more than this. So still the version three is the best value. If you can find a version two of the Bianca and you don't need those low profiling modes, that's a great value. But if you care about these new modes, I think the version three is still the best value because it does have a flow control paddle out of the box and has a good build quality. As good as ECM or Profitec, Definitely not. There are gaps in the panels here, but I do still love Lalit, and I think that this is one of the better value machines on the market. 
depending on where you are in the world, the paint option might be a price increase. And if you want these different wood options, that might also be a price increase. But for me, I love the light wood. I love the matte black. I think this is a great combination with the new updated drip tray and the low flow modes out of the box. This is a great machine that I'm excited to experiment with in ways that some other machines I have just can't. And for full disclosure, Lilith did send me this machine for testing and if I liked it to make content. Now in the process, I promised them absolutely zero. I said I can't promise them any videos or any content, but if I kind of liked it, then I would put something out there for the benefit of all of you. And they agreed to that. So they don't get to see this video before you do, had no input in my say, but I want to be fully honest and transparent with all of you. But now it's your turn. What do you think of the Bianca version three? Would you choose the Bianca over another machine if you're in the market for a flow profiling dual boiler? Would you go for something like the Profitech 700 or would you go for something like the Decent? Let me know all those thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be reading every single one of them. Before you go, be sure to check out the Home Barista Discord that's down in the description below. Also, you can check out my Patreon where I give away a lot of the coffee gear that I review. Be sure to like that video on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.